This is the Music History Today podcast for September 19th. On today's show, the PMRC hearing is held and Captain EO arrives. First up, though, on this date in 1970, the first Glastonbury Music Festival opened. In 1971, the Jackson 5's TV special Going Back to Indiana premiered on ABC television. In 1976, concert promoter Sid Bernstein tried to get the Beatles to reunite by offering to give them $230 million to go to their favorite charity. They said thanks, but no thanks. In 1979, the No Nukes concert was held in New York City. In 1981, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel held their reunion concert at Central Park. In 1985, the United States Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee held what became known as the PMRC hearing, which led to record labels having to put those parental advisory stickers on records. PMRC was Parent Music Resource Center. Among the people testifying were Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister, singer-songwriter and actor John Denver, and singer-songwriter Frank Zappa. We discuss this in-depth, actually, on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which is out on this network as we say these words. Please like, subscribe, and do those algorithm thingies that everybody tells you to do. Anyway, moving on. In 1986, the Captain EO ride, a 3D experience with Michael Jackson, opened at Epcot Center in Walt Disney World. In 1987, the Farm Aid 3 concert was held. In 1990, Eddie Vedder became the lead singer of Pearl Jam. In 1992, JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, where the American portion of the 1985 Live Aid charity concert was held, along with concerts by the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, started to be demolished. In 1993, Michelle Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas was robbed while outside a restaurant in Hollywood, California at gunpoint. In 1997, VH1 Storytellers did a special live TV show with Elton John. Also on that same day, the computer software program Autotune was released to the general public, becoming the bane of all music lovers like myself who appreciate talent over fakeness. Just saying. Moving on. In 1999, the album Fly by the Chicks, or the Dixie Chicks as they were known back then, made the Chicks the first country group to hit number one on the Billboard Albums chart. In 2005, Fergie met her eventual husband, Josh Dumal, while on the set of Josh's TV show at the time, Las Vegas. In 2008, Travis Barker of Blink-182 and DJ AM were seriously injured in a plane accident. Their private plane skidded off the runway and burst into flames when it hit an embankment, killing the pilot. In 2009, singer and actress Zoe Deschanel married Ben Gibbard of Death Cab for Cutie, and in 2015, the 30th anniversary edition of the Farm Aid concert was held. In classical music, in 1908, Gustav Mahler's Seventh Symphony premiered. In theater, in 1910, George M. Cohen's musical Get Rich Quick Wallingford premiered on Broadway. In 1953, the Broadway show Hazel Flag closed, and in 1996, the Broadway show Skylight opened. In award ceremonies that were held on September 19th, in 1996, George Benson received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2003, Johnny Cash was the big winner at the American Music Awards. And in 2021, singer and reality TV show fashion icon RuPaul won his 11th Emmy Award, becoming the first African-American artist to win more than 10 Emmy Awards. Albums that were released in the UK on September 19th include in 2005 when Jethro Tull released Aqualung Live. Meanwhile, in America, in 1958, Elvis Presley released King Creole. In 1961, King Curtis released Old Gold. In 1970, Neil Young released After the Gold Rush, and Mick Jagger released the soundtrack to Performance. In 1975, Dave Mason released Split Coconut. In 1978, Linda Ronstant released Living in the USA, and Golden Earring released Grab It for a Second. 
1980, White Spirit released their self-titled album and Country Joe McDonald released On My Own. In 1981, Triumph released Allied Forces. In 1986, Megadeth released Peace Sells But Who's Buying. Luther Vandross released Give Me the Reason. And Paul McCartney released Press to Play. In 1988, Anthrax released State of Euphoria. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds released Tender Prey. The Cocktoo Twins released Blue Bell Knoll. Enya released Watermark. Level 42 released Staring at the Sun, and Bon Jovi released New Jersey. In 1989, David Bowie released Sound and Vision, and Lenny Kravitz released Let Love Rule. In 1990, Obituary released Cause of Death. In 1994, Kylie Minogue released her self-titled album, and The Tragically Hip released Day for Night. In 1995, Michael Bolton released his greatest hits album. The Flaming Lips released Clouds Taste Metallic. Sunvolt released Trace. Pink Floyd released their EP London 66 to 67. In 2000, Madonna released Music. AFI released The Art of Drowning. And Glenn Fry released 20th Century Masters, The Millennium Collection, The Best of Glenn Fry. In 2005, The Church released Of Skins and Heart, Blurred Crusade. In 2006, The Black Crows released Freak and Roll, Into the Fog. The Indigo Girls released Despite Our Differences. Jane's Addiction released Up from the Catacombs, The Best of Jane's Addiction. And Weather Report released Forecast Tomorrow. Singles that were released on September 19th in the UK. Include in 1969 when the Hollies released He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. In 1980, the police released Don't Stand So Close to Me. And in 1988, Duran Duran released I Don't Want Your Love. Meanwhile in America, in 1966, Paul Revere and the Raiders released The Great Airplane Strike. In 1967, the Bee Gees released Massachusetts and Gary Puckett and the Union Gap released Woman Woman. In 1972, America released Ventura Highway. In 1980, the Rolling Stones released She's So Cold, and in 1984, Kiss released Heavens on Fire. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 19th include country superstar Trisha Yearwood, guitarist Lita Ford of The Runaways and also, of course, of solo fame, guitarist and producer Nile Rogers of the group Chic, the manager of The Beatles, Brian Epstein, singer Brooke Benton, singer Lisa Cimarelli, singer Pia Mia, producer Pierre Bourne, DJ Alex Angelo, country music singer Chase Rice, producer Brent Fayaz, rapper Ugly God, rapper Skepta, rapper Freddie Dredd, singer Sabrina Claudio, rapper Hitesh Sharma, singer Patrick Breeding of the group B5, Scott Bradley of the group Postmodern Jukebox, jazz saxophonist Candy Dolfer, Jarvis Cocker of the group Pulp, Twins Tegan and Sarah Quinn of the group Tegan and Sarah. Singer and actor Rex Smith. Singer Frida Payne. Singer Jeremy Jordan. Cass Elliott of the Mamas and the Papas. LOL Cream of 10CC and also of Godly and Cream. John Coglin of Status Quo. Bassist Stanley Sheldon of Peter Frampton's band. Producer Daniel Lenoy. Singer-songwriter Paul Williams. Bill Medley of the Righteous Brothers, songwriter David Bromberg, Billy Ward of the Dominoes, Nick Massey of the Four Seasons, singer Sylvia Tyson, percussionist Ray Cooper, drummer Rusty Egan of the Rich Kids, and also, of course, of the Sex Pistols, bassist Tatsu Aoki, guitarist Sally Barker, country music singer Jeff Bates, drummer Winston Clifford, Singer Esperanza Griffin of Society of Soul. Musician Paul Winterhart of Kula Shaker. 
drummer A.J. Popoff of the group Lit, Ryan Dusick of Maroon 5, rapper Iman Doyle, singer-songwriter Joey Pearson, saxophonist Delawell Cox Hill, and reed player Alberto Socaras. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 19th include violin maker Joaquim Tilk, who passed away in 1719 at the age of 77. Composer Joseph Selling passed away in 1756 at the age of 46. Composer Carl Ebers passed away in 1836 at the age of 66. Composer Liza Lehman passed away in 1918 at the age of 56. Country music singer Red Foley passed away in 1968 at the age of 58. Pianist Robert Casadesis passed away in 1972 at the age of 73. Graham Parsons of the Birds and also Sweethearts of the Rodeo and also of the Flying Burrito Brothers passed away from a drug overdose in 1973 at the age of 26. We discuss a lot more about his death and strange afterlife of his body because it got stolen on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this network. And trust me, you will want to hear it because the story of how his body went in a whole bunch of different places is the stuff of a legend. It's on this network. Just like, subscribe, do all that funky stuff that the algorithm swears you need to do. Anyway, let's move on. Jazz bassist John Simmons passed away in 1979 at the age of 61. Composer Samuel L. M. Barlow passed away in 1982 at the age of 90. Singer Rodrigo Gonzalez passed away in 1985 at the age of 34. Composer Warner Jansen passed away in 1990 at the age of 91. Conductor Bruce Ferndon passed away in 1993 at the age of 44. Flute player Frankie Kennedy of the group Alton passed away from cancer in 1994 at the age of 38. Blues man Mr. Bo Collins passed away in 1995 at the age of 63. Singer Rich Mullins passed away in a car accident in 1997 at the age of 41. Songwriter and record producer Ed Cobb passed away in 1999 at the age of 61. Singer-songwriter Slim Dusty passed away in 2003 at the age of 76. Singer Skeeter Davis passed away in 2004 at the age of 72. Musician and businessman Ellis Marsalis Sr. passed away in 2004 at the age of 96. Saxophonist who played on the song Tequila, Chuck Rio of the group The Champs, passed away in 2006 at the age of 77. Session drummer Earl Palmer of the Wrecking Crew passed away in 2008 at the age of 83. Arthur Ferrant of Ferrant and Teacher passed away in 2009 at the age of 88. Rock Rada of the group The Executioners passed away from heart issues in 2009 at the age of 37. Jazz pianist Johnny Raticano passed away in 2011 at the age of 80. The singer and also the wife of entertainer extraordinaire, Mr. Bob Hope, Dolores Hope, passed away in 2011 at the age of 102. Conductor and composer Francisco Feliciano passed away in 2014 at the age of 73. Bassist Billy Hatton of the group The Foremost passed away in 2017 at the age of 76. Guitarist Harold Mayburn passed away in 2019 at the age of 73. Drummer Lee Kerslake of the group Uriah Heep and also of Ozzy Osbourne's band passed away in 2020 at the age of 73. Composer Silvano Busotti passed away in 2021 at the age of 89. And the opera singer with the Beirut Festival from 2004 to 2022, Stephen Gould, passed away in 2023 from cancer at the age of 61. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 20th, when in 1979, the album cover for The Clash's album, London Calling, was created. <laughs> ¶¶ 